Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be tackling this VJ loop. It's really cool. It's one of the, my favorites I've ever made. Uh, quick heads up before the tutorial. If you make this or any other tutorials that I've made, um, send it to me on Instagram. I have a highlight right here where I post some of the work that you've guys made, and you can see that some of the other stuff that I do. So let's get into the video. Okay, very important before we do this, you need to go to your user preferences. So go to edit preferences and everything we're doing here in animation, you in your default interpolation right here in the animation side, make sure it's on linear and then everything's gonna loop seamlessly. By default, it's on Bezier and that's gonna mess everything up. First thing we need to add is a cylinder. Before we do that, to keep it within the bounding boxes to make this a seamless loop, we need to put in a square, hit S8 and we'll scale it up. And then over here, uh, you're gonna see this little box, this little square, go to viewport display and where it says textured, change it to wire. So that's so we can keep everything in this box so when we instance the collection, it'll be uh, mathematically correct in the seamless looping. Okay, next thing we need to do, shift A and add a cylinder. Hit R, X, and 90, and we'll have this. Next thing we're gonna do, hit tab, go right up here to do the face select, click that, click over here so we can see these right here, these um, arrows hold down control and just bring it over. You wanna hold down control so it stays within the grid. Everything is, when it comes to making seamless loops, staying within the grid is really, really important. So you just hold down control and you can kinda of see the line where our box is. Just go right to where it hits the edge. We messed up. Right there. And then do the same thing for this side. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is subdivide it. Uh, the problem I'll demonstrate with subdividing these big tubes is the way it subdivides. So we'll just show you how it works. Uh, before, right now, it's just you have these straight lines. There's nothing going this way. So when we hit the subdivision surface and apply it, now we just have one thing. Or if we go back, say give it two, apply it. There's a ton this way. There's a ton of vertices going this way, but there's only two going this way. And then when we add the displacement, it's not going to look good. So what we need to do is add some loop cuts and you're gonna have that right here on the side. If you don't see that, that means it's minimized this way. You'll see a little arrow, bring it over. So let's add a couple loop cuts in here. You're gonna to wanna to put quite a few. So it just evens out the vertices spacement and you can subdivide it much better. So make sure it's about even like that. Okay, so I added a couple more. Uh, you can do right about this much is perfect what I found and now we can add a subdivision surface and a displace. So over here on the displace click new and then click this little button right here and we're going to go pick a cloud texture. So we want this texture to look pretty big so on depth bring it all the way down to zero and then on size bring it to something we'll be able to change this in the future as we design but just for an eyeball say right about there. Okay, so now we have our tube and we'll shade smooth it. One last thing before we do this, if we were to instance this and say duplicate it and bring it all the way to the end, we have a problem with this is that it's not a perfect, we can see there's gaps and that's because it's not perfect. They don't go into each other to make a seamless loop. So we have to add the mirror modifier. First, let's add an empty as the modifier object and bring it right to the edge of our box here. So if we can click it, I can't click it, but you can see the lines right there. Just bring it right to the edge of that box, the plane right here. And then we'll go in and add our mirror modifier in our modifier section. So click the mirror, uh, mirror object, click your empty. And then right here where it says X, click Y. And so now they go into each other perfectly and then we'll just instance this, these two. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add our camera. So let's go in and do that. I'm gonna go into the wireframe view and then on the add camera over here in the rotation settings, put it on 90 or wherever you set up your camera, make sure it's pointing down the tube and then hold down control and we wanna set it right here at the edge. So I'll get that green arrow, hold down control and snap it to your grid. And of course, make sure it's connecting right there to the edge of our plane. So now we need to bring our camera and animate it to go straight through here. So let's take our plane 
duplicate it, hold down control and bring it all the way to the edge of the box so that we can see where to place the camera at the end of the mirrored tube. So let's click on our camera. I usually put it about 24 frames a second and 120 frames. If you don't know how to do the frame rate, the 24 frames a second, that's done right here on frame rate. So 120 frames would be a five second animation. So click on your camera, go to um, the Y. For me, it's Y, whatever one it is for you. Click on the keyframe button here, or you would right click and pl press um, place keyframe. So let's click our camera. And then we need to right here at the very end of the button right there, click it. And then uh, click the right arrow. So we'd go to frame 121. That's super important. Otherwise you're gonna have a duplicate frame when it goes back to the beginning. So now get your camera, hold down control and bring it all the way to the end. I messed up, let's do it one more time. Bring it all the way to the end, right about there. And you can see it's right at the edge of our plane. So it's perfect and it's gonna loop perfectly. Click on your camera and click the keyframe. And now if we go back, hit zero to click on your camera and then press play. And now it goes right through the tube. And then all we'll do is add this to a collection a little bit later. I'll show you how to do that. And we're just gonna send it so that you, can, you can't see the end. Okay, so the last thing we need to do to this is animate it. As you can see in the video, the, uh, the cylinder isn't just standing still. Everything's moving around in this weird organic way. So we're gonna do that really quickly. I have a video on this exact thing called how to displace or how to animate displacement. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna run through that pretty quickly. So first thing we need to add is a Bezier circle. So we're gonna go to the curves and add a circle. Right next to it, we need to add an empty. So we're gonna over here, plane axis, and we're just gonna name it move. Okay, so click on your move object, go to the object constraints, you're gonna see it right there, click follow path, and then click the Bezier circle that we just, uh, we just put in. So the next thing we need to do is animate the empty going in this circle. So in the object constraint, that's a thing called offset, you can kind of see it doing it right there. So right click, insert keyframe, go to the very end, then skip a frame, and then click 100, right click, insert keyframe, so now it's gonna be going through really quickly. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is click on our cylinder, go to the modifiers, in the displace modifier, change it from local to object, and then the object section, click the, the move, and then now we'll see it animate pretty well. What I like to do is take the Bezier circle, and instead of having it that way, I click R twice, and I just rotate it like that, and uh, I just think it, animates a little bit better, but you can do whatever you want. Okay, so now we're gonna go into lighting and shading. My favorite part about this is the texture. I have it on my wallpaper, I like it so much. Okay, so make sure that you're in the EV render engine. So I switched it from cycles. So, and then make sure bloom is on, that's super important. And screen space reflections is on. So you can just see, the only thing that I don't have on is depth of field. We're not gonna be messing with that. I like to turn off motion blur. It's not really, it doesn't really look good on this one. And I like to be able to see the shader that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna turn off motion blur as well. So go to render view, you can't see anything. And we're gonna hit shift A and add a point light. Super bright, way too bright. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit to right about there. And we're gonna change it to a blue, something like that. And then we need to click the point light, then click the camera, holding down shift. So point, hold down shift, click the camera, click control P and object. So now the, the light is gonna follow wherever the camera goes and we don't have to line up a bunch of lights. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the point light and I'm gonna go into my transform and on, on uh, my Y, I'm just gonna send it down, duplicate it again, and then send it down a little bit farther. And being that they're all parented, I don't have to reparent them to the camera. And then I'm gonna pick these last two lights and make them a red color, something like this. And I'm gonna make them a little bit brighter. I think the very end one we're gonna make much brighter, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna make the blue a little more intense. Okay, so now we're working with some pretty cool lighting already. This is looking really, really cool. So now, of course, we're gonna make this shader. Okay, so in 2.8, there is a shading preset right here. If you don't have that, then you're just gonna bring this over like that. And then up here, we're gonna go to the shader editor. 
Okay, so let's get to making this. So click on your object, click new, and we're not gonna make it metallic. We're gonna keep it non-metallic and let's put a clear coat on it. So right down here, add clear coat and it's kind of looking pretty cool. I almost left it at this when I was first designing it, but we're not gonna do that. So it's pretty cool, but we're gonna add some a noise texture to the clear coat roughness. First, so first thing we're gonna do, shift A, and add a color ramp and right next to it we're gonna add a noise texture we're gonna plug the color and we're gonna plug that into clear coat roughness so you can't really see anything going on bring up your detail and then just bring up your scale some and you can kinda of see you can kinda of see it start taking shape so in the color ramp we're just gonna expound on that and make it a little more extreme something like that now it's starting to do what we want it to do. I'm gonna increase the subdivision real quick so we can see it better. And we'll go back. So we can kind of see it start to sort of mess with it on the clear coat roughness here as you can see. And then next thing we're gonna do, normally we would just plug this straight into the roughness, but I don't like what that does to it. It's a little too extreme. So we're just gonna duplicate this color ramp, bring it up here, plug the noise into the factor and then we're going to plug that into the roughness and then we're just going to change this right here till it does what we want let's see what this looks like so it's pretty spread out so we're just going to do this kind of like that get a couple perfectly glossy spots and then i'm going to change the scale a little bit to right about there and now we have that really cool material that really gives it that that magic okay all we need to do here we can kind of see the end of the animation when the camera gets there so first we need to take our our planes here click the plane hold shift click on the plane and then click on your cylinder and then hit M new collection and we're gonna call it tube all right now shift a collection instance click on the tube now just hold down shift and bring it all the way to the end and I think we just need to do that once. Let's check out the animation. We just we need to make sure that we don't see the end of it. And yeah, that's perfect. So we just need to instance it once. And there you go, that's the animation. It's really cool. It's a lot more simple than it looks. And that goes with a lot of designs. Again, if you do make this and you put it on Instagram, send it to me, tag me in it, whatever. I'll add you to the Instagram highlight and you can see a lot of other people's work as well. Thanks for watching.